Hi guys, alright, welcome back to another video from Eleven Lessons Online. I'm gonna be covering microeconomics again. This is part six, okay, on price elasticity of supply. Alright, this is the last elasticity concept that you need to know. Alright, I've already gone through PED, YED, and XED in two parts prior to this video. Okay, I'll leave the link in the top right hand of the description uh, of, of this video actually. You can see it right up there in the top right hand. Uh, hand I can't even say it properly, right? Top right hand corner of the screen. Okay, go check it out. Right? Make sure you understand what P E D Y E D and X E D is first. Okay, before you move on to P S, right? This is the last one. It's gonna be the easiest as well. So let's just um go through it real quick, all right? Okay, firstly, the definition of PES is similar to PED, right? Except it's just the total opposite. Okay, PES measures the degree of responsiveness, right, of quantity supplied due to a change in the price of the same good. Okay, remember we're looking at the same good of PES. Okay, PED we're also looking at the same good, all right? So only XED are looking at two different goods. Okay, so it's the degree of respons of responsiveness, basically the change in quantity supplied due to a change in price. Okay, so the formula is likewise. Okay, the change percentage change in QSS quantity supplied over the percentage change in price. Okay, so you just need to take note that it's always a positive number. Okay, because of the law of supply. Alright, so just take note of this. Okay, the law of supply states that there is a direct relationship between price and quantity supplied. Hence, it is always positive. Okay. Um so just take note, okay, a random example that I've shown here okay, is that a 10% increase in price okay, would cost a 50% increase in quantity supply. So your PS would be 5K. Okay? If you look back at the law of supply, okay, the reason why um, this is so, okay, you can look back at the previous video. I've covered supply in the previous video. Okay, if you recall correctly, right, um, the reason why this is such case okay, because prices basically is kind of like your demand. Okay, it is what consumers want and are willing to pay. All right, so as a result, it's a signaling effect to producers. Okay, so if there's an increase in price, producers will take it that oh, I can increase my profits as well. So as such, they will increase the quantity that they can supply. Okay, so take note, use PES only if there's a change in demand. So this is exactly the same as what I've already gone through in PED, okay, whereby PED is when there's a change in supply, okay. So likewise, okay, if there's an increase in demand, okay, let's say if increase, uh, it could also be a decrease, okay, basically use PES to show whether the price or quantity supplied changed in a huge or small proportion, okay, because in order to determine, okay, when there is an increase in demand, there will of course be um, an increase, okay, in your uh, quantity demanded, right? Um, your quantity, your equilibrium quantity, okay, but at the same time, okay, remember the demand curve, right? It's always sloping downwards. If it shifts outwards, what happens is that your price will increase as well. So if your prices increase, okay, your quantity may be uncertain, okay, depending on supply. So you have to use PES to determine, okay, so if the good is price inelastic, what will happen? If it's elastic, what will happen? Alright, so just take note of this part first, okay, don't worry, like I've said, okay, I'll go through this more in essays, okay, that is where it becomes more applicable. So there are two main types of PES, okay, there's price elasticity of supply, not price elasticity of supply, sorry, price elastic supply, okay, and then there's price inelastic supply, so two types, okay, so PES more than one, okay, all the way to infinity, okay, that is going to be a price elastic supply, okay, as I've stated over here. So, it occurs when a change in price okay, causes a more than proportionate change in quantity supply. So, for example, if a PES equals to 3, okay, supply is price elastic as a 1% increase in price brings a 3% increase in quantity supply. Alright, so basically, the increase in quantity supply will always be a greater percentage than the increase in price. Okay, on the other hand, price inelastic supply is the opposite, so it falls within 0 and 1. Okay, as stated here. Right, so of course when a change in price can actually leads to a less than proportionate. Right, so always remember less than proportion is anything that is smaller than that percentage change in price. So it could be basically 0 0.5, 0 0.3. So it's always to, it has to be positive. So just remember that, okay, because PS is always positive because of your law of supply. Okay, so if PS equals to 0 0.7, then supply is price inelastic as a 1% increase in price brings a 0 0.7 increase in quantity supply. So just take note that they're both still increasing, right? But it's just increasing at a slower rate, okay, at a smaller proportion um, in terms of quantity supply. Alright, so what are the main determinants of PES? Okay, the first one I have over here, okay, is the availability and mobility of factors of production. Okay, if you remember your factors of production, okay, you've got land, labor, entrepreneurship, as well as your last one, C, right, which is capital. Okay, so basically, greater factor mobility would be a would have would result in a more price elastic supply. Okay, the reason why, 
Okay, it's because you're able to change these sectors of production. For example, when it comes to labor, okay, let's say you need someone to suddenly do something that is very high skilled. Okay, if the low skilled labor are not able to shift, okay, then there will be a very price inelastic supply in that case. Okay, as compared to let's say if you have machinery, okay, if um can, is able to let's say print and scan at the same time, okay, that machine itself can consider to be very price elastic in supply. Okay, so factors of production can move from one use to another very easily in the long run. Okay, goods tend to be more price elastic. Okay, the reason why okay, is because firms can find more fa- factors of production or they can possibly train okay, the, the, the factors of production like labor all right, in order to increase the quantity supplied. Okay, all right, next I've got level of stocks or inventories. Okay, basically level of stocks. Okay, you're not looking at the stock market over here. Okay, level of stocks is basically how much inventory space do I have? Okay, how much goods do I have currently stored? Okay, so the greater availability and durability of stocks, okay, of your goods that you're currently storing, the more price elastic the supply. Why? Because if there's a sudden increase in demand, you can respond very quickly. So if there's an increase in price, okay, as a result of demand, okay, let's say price increases, okay, you'll be very price elastic because you have so many goods available that you can easily just supply it as much as you can at that point in time. So you notice that it has a very price elastic supply because um, when the price increase, okay, your quantity supply will increase more than proportionately. Okay, so when a good can be stored as part of its inventory without any loss of quality or incurring any undue expenses, the supply tends to be price elastic. Okay, it's not really gone through. So for example, things like canned foods, okay, they are definitely more price elastic than fruits and vegetables okay, because they can be stored for long periods of time. Alright, the next is the length and complexity of production processes. Okay, it tends to be more price inelastic, okay, if the production process is very complex and takes a long period of time. Okay, one very simple example is all your crops. Okay, it's a very long cultivating process. Your supply is price inelastic. Okay, you cannot suddenly force a crop to just grow all of a sudden. You cannot say, okay, I'm going to make this carrot grow in one day. That will never happen, right? Okay, carrots have, would take a very long period of time just to grow. Okay, so that, in that case, is very price inelastic. Okay, things like wine. Okay, wine is also possibly very price inelastic okay, because it takes time to actually cultivate the wine or that kind of stuff. Okay, so producers are basically unable to respond very quickly to high, higher prices that are being signaled okay, as they cannot increase the quantity supplied in the short run. Okay, so the higher the availability of spare capacity, okay, the more price elastic the supply. So this is basically very similar to your level of stocks. Okay. As long as I've got more space that is ready, okay, um, I will be able to churn out goods in time. Okay, as a result, it could the supply will be more price elastic. Okay, so exam requirements very very simple. Okay, actually PS that is all, all right. Um, I've not gone through the graph, okay, because I'll go through it in a different video as well. Okay, but you just need to take note if you want to know. Okay, that this is the price elastic supply. So this is P E. Okay, this is very hard to write. Let me try and get this PS more than one. Okay, and this is a price inelastic supply. So it's a very, very steep um, curve, okay, supply curve. All right, so just take note of these first, okay, then we'll go through it in another video. Um, and then, uh, so basically for this chapter, okay, all you need to know is just understand, okay, the various elasticity concepts, okay, the definition, the magnitude, the sign, all that kind of good stuff, all right, and be able to explain the different determinants, okay, so just use causal links to explain, give very, very simple examples if you can. Okay, so these elasticity concepts tend to be, a, um, in your demand and supply essay questions, okay, so don't worry about it too much, okay, you tend to come up more than, and then you actually understand how to apply, okay, when I actually do go through questions, um, in the future. All right, so if you did enjoy this video, okay, this is just a very simple simple content based PAS video. Okay, be sure to um subscribe to the channel. Okay, it really does help me a lot. Okay, as well as to give the video a like, alright, if you did enjoy it. Okay, if you have any questions, leave it down below. I'll be sure to answer them as quickly as possible. If not, to the next one, it should be on price adjustment process. Okay, I'll see you guys then. Bye bye.